So what we're going to finish up with is talking about the supergroups of protists. So there are five supergroups within the kingdom protista. And what is thought is going to happen is most scientists think that these supergroups are going to turn into kingdoms because once you see the diversity, it's like, yeah, that kind of might make sense. So the first supergroup is going to be called excavata. And what puts them in this group is they have an excavated feeding groove on one side of them. So this is going to be euglena, trypanosoma, and giardia. And I have pictures of these guys. So euglena, you've probably seen before. Um, <clears throat> Where is it? There it is. Little green guys are kind of cigar shaped and they actually um, cruise around on the slide when you make a wet mount of them. And these guys are going to be mixotrophs. So they do a little bit of photosynthesis, but they actually are heterotrophic as well. Then also in this group is going to be trypanosoma. Trypanosoma is going to be what causes um, sleeping sickness. So these right here are red blood cells of someone who's infected. And the way you know they're infected is because you can see the trypanosoma um, are all these kind of flattened kind of worms. But you can see that excavated feeding groove that they have. Also in this category is going to be the lovely Giardia. And Giardia is going to be the reason why you don't just take a water bottle and stick it into a mountain stream and drink it. Because these guys could be in there. And these guys are going to get in there by um, organisms defecating near the water. And they are going to cause you to have massive diarrhea, vomiting, um, a lot of um, cramping. And it's, it's a blast. It really is. So that's why you don't do that. All right, the next group, Chromalveolata. This is going to be very diverse. Um, and so this is going to include dinoflagellates, which I'll show you a picture of. They cause something called red tides. Plasmodium, which is what causes malaria. Paramecium, which you might have seen before. They zoom around as well. Um, diatoms, which are gorgeous, gorgeous creatures. And then golden brown algae. <clears throat> so those are going to be algae that literally is a gold or a brown color, and they can be big, and um, they're going to be used as emulsifiers, which means they thicken stuff. So they're going to be used for dripless paints, they're going to be used in lipstick, they're going to be used in pudding, all sorts of different things. Okay, so um, if we go back to this... We've got dinoflagellates, so this is what they look like, and they're called dinoflagellates because they kind of have these like hard tests, which are almost like a shell around them. And these guys can cause um, red tides, and a red tide is when you have a big bloom of dinoflagellates, and it literally turns the ocean um, red. So here's another dinoflagellate right here. Um, here's a red tide. So you can see, I mean, the ocean is red. And so this is going to be caused by um, a bloom of these guys, which they think they've linked to fertilizer runoff. And the reason we care about a red tide is because it kills all the fish. Um, so it can be kind of detrimental. It does happen naturally, but it's happening a lot more lately. Um, so here's another picture of a red tide. So um, it can actually harm us too. Like, so if you go swimming in there, which I'm sure you wouldn't want to when it looks like that, and also there's dead fish everywhere, but if you were like, yeah, that seems like a good idea, um, what's going to happen is um, you're going to have respiratory issues. So you'll feel like you have allergies or a cold, so it's really not a good idea. Um, and then I think I've got a picture of the beach when there's a red tide, and you can definitely see all of the dead fish on the beach and stuff like that. So not a good thing. Um, moving on to plasmodium, plasmodium is going to be what causes malaria. And so um, you can see this is a blood sample and the plasmodium is going to actually go in and it's actually going to insist in there. Um, so that's what causes malaria. You're going to get that from a mosquito biting you. Um, then there's paramecium. These don't do anything mean to you, but you find these in like pond water and that kind of stuff. And they're really cool to look at under the microscope because they zoom all over the place. And then we've got the diatoms. So diatoms are going to have a test made of silica, which is like glass, and they're beautiful. They're very geometric looking, and diatoms are a really important part of the food chain. And they're like, so they're found in plankton, and so you can see microscope slides of them. And they, um, if you crush them, you can actually use it as a natural pesticide. So you could sprinkle it, like if you had like aphids that were in your lawn and you didn't want them there, you could sprinkle diatomaceous earth is what it's called. And those little tiny glass-like tests that are all broken are going to cut the exoskeleton of those organisms, and they basically are going to dry out and die from that. So, interesting. And then the last part is that golden um, brown algae. So, oh, I didn't have a picture of brown algae, but you get the idea. So, that's going to be that next group, Chromalveolata. Now, the next one we're going to talk about... <clears throat> God, my computer's acting weird. Um, whoa, whoa, okay. 
Here we go. Um, the next group we're going to talk about is going to be Rhizaria, and um, this is going to include amoebas, forams, and radiolarians. So I'll show you pictures of those. So amoeba you're familiar with, and amoeba are going to look like that, and they're going to make those pseudopods, which are like those false feet that they can use to kind of um, get their food. And then foraminifera, they're called forams for short. If you look, they look like little miniature seashells, right? And that's kind of what they are. You find these in sand. And so um, they're going to be another important one. And then you've got radiolarians, which I love. I think they're super cool. They almost look like little spaceships. And um, these look similar to diatoms to people, but the way you can tell the difference is they have those little like holes punched out of them. But once again, really important in the plankton. All right. Then the next group <clears throat> is Archaea plastida, and that's going to be just red and green algae, so I'll show you some slides of those in a second. And then the last part there is going to be Uniconta, which is going to include slime molds and coanoflagellates. So back to our PowerPoint, we've got um, red algae, so there's obviously bright red algae, and it looks like some gold algae in the background. And then you've got the green algae. So that's going to be um, Archaea plastida. And then the last part, um, that last one, is going to be the slime mold. And a slime mold is really interesting. It'll look like this, which is just like a blob, but that's called the slug. And that can actually move, and when it finds a nice location where it's happy, it'll actually grow up and make a fruiting structure that looks kind of like this. It'll make its um, spores, and then it can repeat the process. Now, most slime molds aren't going to do anything to you, but there are some that can cause um, infections and stuff. So obviously, if you see a big like slime mold cruising along the forest floor, just back up and let it go. That, that's all you got to do. Um, so the other ones in this group are going to be coanoflagellates. So coano means collar, flagellate means flagella. So you can see this flagella has a collar. And what's interesting is when we start talking about animals, these are actually thought to be living together, and that's what formed the first animal. So you can kind of see how the progression goes. Um, so the last thing that we were going to talk about in here is, um, sorry, I'm going to do this later, um, is the ecological roles that, that they play. So some of them are going to be symbiotic. Um, they're going to be um, some called zooxanthellae, which is always a fun word. And they actually are going to live on coral, and they're going to make a protective coating on the coral and provide it with nutrients, and the coral is going to provide it with a place to live. Um, and then there's termites inside termites' guts, they're going to eat wood, and they don't have the enzymes to break down wood, but there are protists that do. So the protists live in the termite's gut, and they actually help to break down the cellulose, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, they're going to have a big ecological role in the food chain because a lot of them are going to be photosynthetic, so they can provide the producer level of the food chain. So that's going to be protists. I hope you enjoyed it.